Welcome back to this edition of the Rainer Report. Each and every week we provide you this short video, 10, 11, 12 minutes, and just share with you what we think are some of the critical issues that congregations are facing today. Here is a question that I have had probably on the average once or twice a week, so 100 times a year, and I don't think that I'm speaking in hyperbole to say that. And it's this, hey, hey Tom, you always talk about a church should be a praying church. You, 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 you talk about Acts 2, and, and you talk about Acts 6, and you, you demonstrate about the power of prayer in the church. Can you tell us how that practically plays out? What are some examples? Okay, we know we're supposed to pray, and we pray individually, we pray in our quiet time, and we know we're supposed to pray in a church, but I think that means more than just a uh, bless the gift and the giver during the offering. You ever heard that prayer? Are, are going over a hospital list, and, and the, all those are important. But what are some other examples of effective prayer ministries? Let me just share with you five. I hope these five will be help, helpful to you. Uh, I almost said the word hopeful because I think they will also be helpful as well. The first one is prayer over the facilities. We actually have a prayer team at our church, and, and Paul leads this uh, each and every week. And they come together, obviously I'm not there because I don't remember the exact time. It's like 5 or 5.30, one morning a week before going to work. And they have a few people, sometimes several people. And here's what, here's what they do. We're a small church, so this is, this is possible. They walk past every chair. They walk past every room. They go to the lobby and they pray, Lord, as someone walks in this lobby, just so in such a way that only you can do, bless them or convict them. Whoever's sitting in this chair, Lord, and again, they may not do it chair by chair, they may do it row by row, but they go through and they just pray over the facilities. They go to the nursery and pray for safety. They go to the children's area and pray for the salvation and discipleship of the kids who are out there. They go to the parking lot and pray for those who are coming in. They may have been stressed getting to church that the stress will go away. They pray over the facilities. Secondly, your senior adults and retirees. I used to talk about senior adults and retirees as if it was those people. Now I are a senior adult. I is one. And ju just to give you an example, um, this, this past week, uh, Sunday after church, Nellie, Joe, and I usually go to an upscale restaurant. Usually it's Cracker Barrel. But uh, Cracker Barrel in the Franklin area where we were going to was just packed. And we could tell people were in the rocking chairs and they were standing around. And we just said, we're, we're, we're not going to go to Cracker Barrel because we'd probably have a 45-minute wait. And at our age, that's just really difficult. So we went to a second choice. And we went to IHOP, or in the word, that, for whatever reason, Nellie Joe calls it IHOPs. She said, I want to go to IHOPs. And so we went there and we had about a 10-minute wait and it was good. Nellie Joe, if you've ever been to an IHOP, they have this multi-page menu and about 90% of it's covered with pancakes or waffles, but still there's other choices there. And she turned to one section that said over 55. And she was so excited. She said, I'm going to order the over 55. Nell Joe's 62, I'm 62. And so she was just so excited to be a senior adult that could get the breakfast sampler because she was over 55. So I am or is a retiree. Not a retiree, I'm, I'm, I'm a senior adult. A retiree will be in the near future, I'm sure. So here, here, here is what you can begin to think about in terms of retirees or senior adults. Get them involved in productive ministry. Ask them to become the prayer warriors of the church. Give them some guidance on some of these issues that we've just talked about during this Rainer Report. Ask them to take the leadership of it. That will not be just some type of token ministry. It could become the most powerful ministry in the church. In many of our churches, what we do with senior adults is we entertain them. It becomes the, they, they, they receive recreation instead of doing ministry. And all, all we do is worry about what trips they go on and, 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 and where, the, you know, they, they may join Jonathan in Gatlinburg or something of that effect. But why not use them in a way that can make a powerful difference in the church? Some churches are beginning to realize that that is untapped potential. So that's number two. Number three, excuse me, number three, worship, service, prayer, ministry. Many of you have this. 
but it's three or four people praying as the service is going on. Typically, they have a worship guide or a bulletin, and they're, they're, they, they may not be hearing everything that is going on. They may, but they're praying, Lord, let this hymn, let this contemporary song speak to this person. Lord, during this prayer time, may people sense your presence. During the message, they're praying for the pastor and for those who are receiving the message. Many churches have worship service prayer ministries, but many don't. And it may be a good idea for your church as well. Another thing, you are probably getting guest cards uh, turned in each worship service. I know we, my, my church average is about 150, and we probably get 30 or 40, maybe even 50 a week. Now, some members are turning it in as well, so it's, it's not that we have that many guests. We, you know, we'll probably have 10 or 12 guests as well, but we pray over those cards. Uh, people are actually praying that uh, this person's prayer need will be met, that uh, this guest who came uh, would, would have sensed the presence of the Holy Spirit and God is working in their lives right now. What if you began, instead of just at the end of the service throwing the prayer cards for someone to handle in, a, in an administrative way to send a, a welcome letter or a welcome email, what if you actually had a time where you were praying over those? That could be a dynamic prayer ministry for your church. It could make a difference. Number five, a 24-7 prayer ministry. There, there have been in my churches, in every one of my churches, at least one 24-7 prayer ministry. And what I mean by that is for a period, we had prayer room or rooms open 24 hours a day. And we had at least one person in them every hour a day. Depending on the size of the congregation I was serving, it could have been for two days, three days. Uh, sometimes it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday leading to a Sunday worship but it was powerful, and we had guided prayer. And we, we said, over the next hour, pray about this. Many people went into that saying, there's no way I can pray for an hour. But they went through that guided prayer of about three or four pages, and they said the time went so quickly. That has been some of the most powerful prayer moments in churches where I have led and served. And sometimes you use it up to, to it's upcoming to a big event like an Invite Your One. Sometimes you use it just for direction about, God, what do we need to do? Sometimes you use it for a major building program. Sometimes you use it just to, to move from an inward focus to an outward focus. But that can be one of the most potent, most powerful times of prayer within your church, within your congregation. These are five examples. Now, here's what I want to say about these. They are not mutually exclusive. For example, the senior adults could be involved or leading any one of these. For example, you could have prayer teams that have leadership over each of these. In two of the churches where I served as prayer ministry, we had a prayer ministry coordinator. It was, uh, it, in one case, it was Aline. Uh, in the other case, it was Lillian. And in each of those cases, they made sure that these prayer emphases always stayed before the church. When someone owns it, it tends to get done. So I would, I would consider strongly having a prayer ministry coordinator. But my point is this. These are five examples. These are, this is not an exhaustive list, but you've asked the question, how does effective corporate prayer play out? Praying over the facilities, senior adults or retirees in guided prayer times, worship service prayer ministries, prayer over guest cards, and potentially a 24-7 prayer ministry. You also see a link here to, to a blog post I wrote not too long ago called Pastoral, I'm, I'm sorry, this was actually a podcast, Pastoral Leadership, Prayer, and Church Health on a Rainer on Leadership. goes back to episode 316 on a podcast I did. That can augment some of the information that I just gave in a longer format above 20 minutes if you want to learn more about this issue of prayer in the church. We say prayer is important. We think so in our head. We may even have heartfelt conviction about it. But is it something that we are acting out on a daily basis in our church or at least on a weekly basis within our churches? If we really believe that prayer is the foundation of so much of everything that we do, are we seeing it played out in our churches? 
So I hope these five examples helped you on Rainer on Leadership and uh, podcasts and also the Rainer Report and this video. I hope that they, they will be of assistance to you. And always, I want to thank Costco and Associates, uh, Tim Songster, uh, a design bill firm, which simply means they will do everything from beginning to end about building a new facility, uh, a new worship center, a new uh, education space, office space, or remodeling as well. They're just the best in the business. If you have questions about church facilities, go to churchdesign.com. Uh, go to Tim Songster. Just tell them that you heard about the, the whole idea of church design, uh, design build, and that you heard about it at uh, Rainer Report and you wanted to explore something with Tim. Thank you again for being a part of this. As always, Every week we have a video Rainer Report, and so I will get to see you next week as we continue to grow healthy churches together, and especially through the power of prayer. I'll see you on the other side.